And it's time for Lefties Losing It. Let's start with a masterclass in lefty annihilation delivered by the master himself, Dr. Jordan Peterson. Watch him school this lefty, Stephen Bonnell. I've never heard of him. He's called Destiny, apparently. Uh, I don't know. After this, he might change his name to Depressi. Because, like, I could imagine somebody saying that, like, they don't trust, like, a large government. They think there's too much, uh, you know, prone to tyranny or something like that, but also be supportive of an institution like the Catholic Church, which is literally, you know, one guy who is a direct right, line to God. Right, but they can't tax. Um, well, I mean, there's... And they don't have a military. That and is... And they can't conscript you. True, right? yeah. And they can't throw you in jail. That is true, yeah. <laughs> it was a wide-ranging debate about uh, religion, big government, big pharma, and climate change. Here... Destiny argues that we've just had the hottest year on record. We just got another one of the hottest years on record. How many times are we going to have another hottest year on record? How many times are we going to have an increase of carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere before we're finally like, okay. I don't hmm. know. And the, the reason I don't know is because it depends. The scientific answer to that question depends precisely on the time frame over which you evaluate the climate fluctuation. And that's actually an intractable scientific problem. So you might say, well, if you take the last 100 years, this variation looks pretty dismal. And I'd say, well, what if, what if you took the last 150,000 years? And I've saved the best for last. Here, Dr. Peterson explains what the climate catastrophists do, their communist-like compassion narrative, which is anything but. Sit back and enjoy. I think it's pretty undeniable at this point that there is an impact on climate across the planet I, just I think that's highly deniable. We have no idea what the impact is from. We don't know where the carbon dioxide is from. We can't measure the warming of the oceans. We have terrible temperature records going back 100 years. Almost all the terrestrial temperature uh, 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 detection sites were first put outside urban areas, and then as and then cities, right, and then you have to warm. correct. Then you have to correct for the for the movement of the urban areas, and then you introduce an error parameter that's larger than the purported increase in temperature that you're planning to measure. This isn't data, this is guess, and there's something weird underneath it. There's something weird that isn't oriented well towards human beings underneath it. It has this guise of compassion. Oh, we're gonna save the poor in the future. It's like, that's what the bloody communists said, and they killed a lot of people doing it, and we're walking down that same road now with this insistence that, you know, we're so compassionate that we care about the poor a hundred years from now. And if we have to wipe out several hundred million of them now, well, that's a small price to pay for the future utopia. And we've heard that sort of thing before. And the alternative to that is for, is to stop having global level elites plot out a utopian future or even an anti-dystopian future. And that's exactly what's happening now with organizations like the WEF. And if this wasn't immediately impacting the poor in a devastating manner, I wouldn't care about it that much, but it is. You know, I watched over the course of the last five years, the estimates of the number of people who were in serious danger of food privation rise from about 100 million to about 350 million. That's a major price to pay for a little bit of, what, what would you say, for for progress on the climate front that's so narrow it can't even be measured. I don't think the increase in, in hungry people on the in the planet is because of climate policies. Why not? Think, because, because I don't think that countries in Africa are being pushed away from fossil fuels. I mean, most developing countries. Of course nations, they are. Right? They, can't even get, they can't even get loans from the World Bank to produce, for, per, pursue fossil fuel development. And there's plenty of African leaders who are screeching at the top of their lungs about that because the elites in the West have decided that, well, it was okay for us to use fossil fuel for, so that we wouldn't have to starve to death and our children had some opportunities, but maybe the starving masses that are too large a load for the world anyways shouldn't have that opportunity. And that's, that's direct policy from the UN fostered by organizations like the w, WEF. They're gonna have to turn to renewables. Yeah, well, good luck with that. Isn't he magnificent? Now, from the sublime to the ridiculous, let's hear from Democrat Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal. This is gaslighting on a mass scale, telling girls and women that banning male bodies from sporting competitions, female sporting competitions, hurts all women. My amendment would require a report on the impacts of this bill on all female athletes since categorical bans on trans women harm all women. That is why women's organizations across the country, including the Women's Sports Foundation, 
have denounced categorical bans on trans athletes for promoting fear, dangerous stereotypes, unfair scrutiny on high-performing female athletes, and sex di discrimination based on misinformation. And just think about this for a second. How are you going to enforce this ban? How do you verify a girl or a woman's, quote, reproductive anatomy? I don't know, Pramila. Maybe uh, you can consult this kid. Boys have a penis, girls have a vagina. <laughs>